it kind of feels like I'm uh, under 14 or under 12 again and I'm just like learning everything so quickly. I'm out here in Lawrence uh, in Kansas. Uh, it's a small university town, like what, 45 minute drive out from Kansas City. I'm out here with uh, the specialized crew um, being looked after really well. Uh, and Remco and Matea from Quickstep are also with us. Um, so riding with them is super cool. I mean, they're some of the best riders in the world. <laughs> We went out as a group. Um, we were riding with Michael, the guy that organizes the race. My grandfather's from here, uh, my mother too. So as a kid, I would come here. It's where I learned to drive. I rode my gravel for the first time here as a kid. I had my first crush on <laughs> Karen Kuhlman. And now here, all these years later, I get to uh, bring a race here that, you know, all the things that I love and the Belgian heritage to uh, this wonderful, unique place. The race is based around a bike shop called Sunflower. Seems to be one of the only places I can imagine that has stock of things. Um, and yeah, they really looked after us. The roads out here are very different. Gravel in the UK is almost just mud. The only thing with these roads, like they're probably smoother than the roads that I train on at home on the road, road, um, but they just have huge potholes. Every now and then you just have these huge sort of like crater style potholes. Uh, it looks as though we're gonna go a little bit further out into some woods, uh, onto some single track, and it's been raining here for the last week, so my guess is there's going to be some quite wet patches and the bikes are going to be filthy by the end of it. In terms of my bike, I've got uh, SRAM 12 speed, uh, the XPLR um, group set, the Specialized Diverge, uh, which like the other guys are riding the crooks, but I don't know, I still have, I, I still love the Diverge. Um, I, the Future Shock just gives me so much confidence, um, just taking that edge off the, off the, off the rattle and fingers crossed for, for no punches. But luckily we did, we did practice our tire plugging today. So um, yeah, if it, does, if it does come to that, then we will be well prepared. Tomorrow's race, uh, as far as I can see, it's like 90% off-road. Uh, it's 179K. I don't really, I'm going into it like pretty unknown as to what it's gonna be like, but fuel up and just give it everything I've got. Yeah, I, I love the atmosphere at, at these kind of races. Um, when people know how long the race is gonna be, like it's gonna be six hours. Um, everyone's so chill at the start. Um, people understand that the first 5k is not going to make or break their race. People were eating waffles, getting coffee, uh, and then we were rode over to the start line and uh, rolled out. It was pretty cold. Um, I committed to uh, shorts and short sleeves, which I think it was the right decision based off of the temperature like maybe an hour or two into the race but the start was cold like really cold there were a few attacks that went early um the brunch stayed pretty chilled um like people let them go and you know, knowing that one or two or even three riders weren't going to make it all 100 miles by themselves the climbs were like three kilometers long maximum, most of the time, maybe four or 500 meters. Um, 
So you had to be aware of them. You had to be quite awake, which at times I, um, I wasn't. I was letting a few gaps go, giving myself a bit more work to, to bring them back. But then it's kind of, it's a bit of a balancing act between doing that or putting in a big, big, big kick to try and stay with some of these attacks. Around 30 miles in, I believe that's like 50K, um, a group of, I would say about seven of us um, made an attack, got ahead just before this really, really narrow bridge where you basically get to stop. thought for a bit that that was going to be a strong group that would stay together for a while or at least until the first single track section um, but with two guys up the road also um, we took a I, I don't know if I should call it a wrong turn there's a lot of debate as to what should have happened at this turning point um, but we followed the GPS originally uh, and ignored the arrows because arrows can be unreliable every now and then and it was carnage because people were trying to decide which way to go don't really know what happened there don't want to get into it but i went the right way with with um with the majority of people and uh, yeah, then we hit the first single track section. This is where I made my biggest mistake. And we took this right off this road and it was like a, a tiny little bridge to get over the ditch. Um, some guy fell over in front of me. And I was what, like 30 riders back. Um, and I was, yeah, big mistake. Um, everybody was singling out and splitting up um, then and I'm not I'm not I'm not a guy for single track uh, I've only just started going off road on my bike so um, yeah I struggled through this whole section kind of c clipping my pedals on every single rock it seemed like once we got through it we hit the road and I just put put as much power down for for a little while as possible until I found a, a good group that sort of worked together It took a while for us to get a good, good chain gang going. Um, I don't know. There, there wasn't, there wasn't the energy. I didn't get the sense that we were going to catch anyone in that group. The gravel was pretty smooth for a, like until 20 miles to go. I saw on the on the route that there was like a cyclocross section on the course, but I know I just assumed it was going to be like they said it was six miles. I just I don't know in my head that was six k, and then I, I don't know I just assumed it was just going to be like a muddy section, um, or a section w which you could ride and then you had to get off a couple times, but we hit this like never ending, like. Well, a, as a as a roadie, I would call it a rock garden, but I'm sure on a mountain bike, people would just think it's tarmac. We just kept doing loops of this thing, like in, out, like going round on the grass and then going back in, going a different way through this forest and then doing another loop and then going back in to a different entrance of this like area. And then it just, it was just never ending. Um, it was really tough going into this going into this single track, like four and a half, five hours in. Um, I crashed at one point, like very slow moving crash, basically just toppled over. But that caused like a whole lot of cramping because you just tense up when stuff like that happens. And ah, oh, it was rough. Looking back on it, it was fun and it was a really cool addition to the route, but it was cruel. Um, I, did, I crossed the finish line and I was completely empty. Um, like you don't realize how hard you've gone because you're just in the zone until you cross the finish line and then you are, you're done. <laughs> I ended up crossing the finish line 12. Um, like I'm neither happy or sad about that. I like, 
I'm pleased that I was there or thereabouts in the race, um, for sure. But uh, I didn't know what to expect coming into it. I was very happy to see the finish line. I was very happy to see the waffle stand was still going. Oh, the waffles. The waffles resurrected me, genuinely. Like, I wouldn't have been able to ride back to the hotel without having two waffles with ice cream and syrup and melted butter, yes. This whole experience was um, was so good. I feel like not only do the gravel races suit me in terms of the consistent power over a long period of time and the length of the races, um, the whole community just feels like one that I fit a bit more into. Um, people were really chilled. There's a nice, it's a relaxed atmosphere and everybody's there to compete, but I think everybody has the priority of enjoying themselves higher than beating the person next to them. Right then, time for some off season, I think. <laughs> <laughs>